this is my CNC plasma table that I originally purchased from Premier Plasma, but I have modified it in many different ways to make it work so much better. I'll start by sharing with you these bows. And all I did was put spacers on the left and right to shorten the amount of space that they have. By bowing this material, it prevents anything you set on it from moving if it's touched very easily. The next thing that I did, I completely drained the table and the junction in between was leaking because this is a two piece steel table and the junction in between, I went and got windshield urethane from auto park, uh, local auto park store and I welded that joint first, I MIG welded it and then smothered it in windshield urethane and that has helped with that tremendously. I also welded in some drains and connected the two tables together. And then I've just got a PVC drain piece with a snout on the bottom so I can drain it into five gallon buckets if I need to drain and clean the table. And that's helped tremendously because when you need to fill this up, in the past I would fill up one side, then fill up the other. Now I fill up one side and it will equalize with the other side. So that's been great. But one of the things I was never told when I bought this was how to properly set this up to begin with. So I came up with my own ways. I didn't, I looked a bit, but some of this stuff's hard to find. Hopefully mine's easy to find for everybody. But you wanna make sure that the distance traveled on each axis is the actual distance traveled. So you wanna check your X, your Y, and your Z distances. And so what I came up with, I'll zoom in here. See that little spike? I zip tied that to my torch. And that is the same as this piece here. It's just a pick tool and I've got this end pointing down so that I can point to a very specific spot. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit and I'm gonna zoom back in on this ruler which shows 64 and 30 seconds of an inch. So it's a very high resolution ruler. So all I do is I lay this down on the table and then confirm that the distance traveled is the actual distance traveled. And let me elaborate a little bit. So if you look up here on my screen, you'll see you've got the X and the Y. So I'm gonna move this manually. And as far as I know, like all the software that I've dealt with uses the up and down arrows, left and right arrows, and page up, page down to move the torch. So I'm gonna put my torch into position First of all, we'll go down. And what I want to do is get this on a mark that I can see. We can begin at the very beginning of this. And I've already gone through this exercise completely, so I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. So zoom back in here and show you once you set it down you want to make sure that it's runs along like if you're checking the axis you want to make sure that the ruler runs along that axis so I'm gonna zero this I'm gonna zero this then I'm gonna go back to the table and I'm gonna make sure that it is pointing to a very specific point as in I like to start at the one inch mark. So I'm gonna go down. And I'm gonna go up. I should have actually pushed this down more so it's below the torch, so I'm gonna do that now. There. Now it's hanging beneath the torch and I can get it really, really close without touching. You don't wanna to touch and move the thing, obviously then your measurements will be inaccurate. So let's say that's at one inch. I'm gonna re-zero everything on my screen. Okay, now they're zero. Now I'm gonna move that far. And I'm gonna look at the screen. And it shows 6.44 inches. Well, it's gonna be hard to really get that. So there, 
That's what I want to see. Something on a on a good mark, on a big mark on that ruler. So that's 6.5027. So we're talking about 2.7 thou off of the 6.5. In my case, I need to use a flashlight, but I'll look over here and I will see it is dead on the 6.5. So that axis is covered. The next thing we need to do is do the same thing on my x-axis, okay? So once you get that done, and you'll want to confirm a few points. Once you get that done, then you're going to make sure that it's square. So what I have done to make sure that it's square is I actually had a known square factory cut piece of material. I laid it in the table and I ran it all the way end to end with the pointer right at the very edge of it. Made sure that it didn't move. If it didn't stay right on, then I would adjust the material until it did. Once I did that, then it's the next move. You check this axis and make sure it follows it perfectly. In my case, it did not. And so what I had to do was unbolt. Right here, I'll zoom in. See those bolts there? I unbolted those and I canted it enough to, to get it to zero out 100%. And I actually had to take a die grinder bit with a tungsten carbide bit and open it up a little bit to give me enough space to do that. But that's what I did. Now this thing is perfectly square. And X and Y axes, dead on, as well as my Z axis. And I'm gonna show you how I did that next. Oh, let me back up. If, in fact, your distance traveled is wrong, now this is the software from C and CNC. This is a factory software for, or the OE software for some uh, companies like, um, gosh, I can't remember the name right now, but anyway, it's OE software for some companies. So in this case, I would go to machine, edit configuration, and then you would think you would go to axes, but in this case, you go to motors. And these are stepper motors, so you set the steps per unit. You continue adjusting these until the distance traveled is exactly what you measured. So the last axis I need to show you is gonna be the Z. And this one's pretty easy. All I do is take this and this is a 12 inch caliper. You can use a six inch if that's all you have. Anything to measure, break it loose. And I put it on the edge, let's say right here. And then I use this as a probe and I probe all the way down to the, to the base. Then I will move the torch a certain amount. I'll look at this result in this case, let's say that's eight inches, 250, 252 thousandths. So I'll move the torch down, take another measurement and confirm that it's right. If it's not, I'll adjust the number of steps in that motor. So we're still not done. There's one other thing we need to do to make sure that this thing is as right as it can be and it cuts properly. What you need to do, in this case, I use this square here I will set it on this axis on top of my material. And then I will use the same dial caliper. I'll hold this with one hand on the table and then I will probe across this. Make sure it's laying flat. Then I'll probe to the top of the torch and make sure you're in the center. And then I'll do the same on the bottom and those need to agree. You need to do that on two planes. You need to do it on this plane and then perpendicular or 90 degrees off axis from that. Make sure they agree in both ways. If they do not, you need to figure out a way to adjust your torch. In my case, because I didn't have a lot of time, I just put spacers in here. When I originally built this, I just took some aluminum and I cut a V, I drilled and tapped it, and then made straps to hold it and I ended up putting some material back here to space it out to get this torch 
perfectly plumb to the table and to what's laying on the table. Had I had more time, I would have drilled it out and put grub screws here, 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 four grub screws. You can get those pretty cheap on eBay, Amazon, whatever. I would have gotten, I would like a fine thread. So if I could find it, maybe quarter 24, something like that, and put the grub screws in. And then I would put a small sheet of thin eighth inch aluminum or steel, just so I'm not, I don't want to puncture this. And I would adjust those screws until this thing is square and that would be the end of it. I ended up using spacers and material to, to, to accomplish that. But that's the last of setting up this table. Everything is square. Every distance traveled is the actual distance traveled and the torch is plumbed to the material. So beyond that, you need clean, dry air and you need good air pressure. I just recently learned because I was doing a job that was away from my shop where I didn't have my big compressor with my refrigerated dryer. I had a little baby compressor in the shop and I turned it off, I went to lunch, I came back and I forgot to turn the compressor on. That idiot move cost me a $400 torch because they don't offer parts for it. I'm actually using an Everlast 100 amp machine and it will allow you to start cutting if you're above the threshold. But if you go below the threshold, it will continue to run and that is where the problem is. I've got a cure for that if anybody needs to know the cure to stop that from happening because what happens is there's a blowback circuit in there that's spring loaded and over time those get sticky and that can cause arcing to happen inside your torch. But in my case, it's, it occurred because the pressure became too low and it completely destroyed it inside. It literally burned it up inside. Like I said, I do have a cure for that. If anybody's interested, just message me and I'll let you know. The last thing I wanted to speak about is the torch itself. I originally got a torch from Everlast. I got the machine torch and it worked okay, but I wanted something more accurate. I reached out to the people at Plasmadyne and they're, they've been around eBay for a long time. Really super good people. I've been very pleased with them, but I think everybody who's been in the industry long enough knows that hypertherm is the, the, the high standard of plasma machines and consumables, torches, and so on. And hypertherm doesn't offer a torch for my Everlast machine for obvious reasons. So I ran into Plasmadyne and they showed me this torch and they had just come out with it at the time, but I've had it for a few years. This torch is made by them, but it uses a lot of hypertherm consumables. The cap, the swirl ring, everything but the electrode. The electrode they have to have custom made because that is a patented piece and they will not violate that patent. So everything other than that, you can get on the open market and I have had great success with this torch. It cuts more accurately than my Everlast machine torch ever did. So I'm, I'm in love with this torch. I actually just bought a hand torch from because remember I mentioned I burned the damn thing up. So yeah, this is their high amp, 125 amp. This is actually designed for a high duty cycle use, 160 amps if I'm not mistaken, they can confirm. But this is designed for running industrial levels of operation, basically throwing material in and cutting it all day long. What I've discovered with this is I'm not changing consumables. I, I actually haven't ever had to change consumables on this since I put this torch in, except for when I had a touchdown and I burned it up, but that was my fault. But I'm gonna say I've had this for two and a half years and I've cut quite a bit with it. And I, since that other mistake, I've never had to change a consumable. With my other machine torch, I was changing consumables all the time just to get it to cut cleanly and properly and square and all that. So you're never gonna get perfection out of a plasma machine when it comes to, cutting, uh, comes to cutting circles and edges perfectly square and all that, but this is gonna be as close as you can get. And I will say with the exception of the high definition, which is a completely different animal in all fairness. Otherwise, if you want perfect, clean, 
super accurate circles and edges cuts, you're gonna have to use a laser. But for what I've got into this machine, it cannot be beaten. This is my recipe for success. And one of these days, I plan on actually expanding this table to a five by 10, which won't take, but a little bit of material. So that's my two cents on how to set up a plasma table, CNC plasma, when you get it new. Get it set up, make sure it's square, make sure distances traveled are adjusted so that it is dead on accurate and you should have the best possibility of a clean cut. If I can help in any way, just send me a message.